Now, I figured when reports started to surface about the possibility of Destination America looking to cancel TNA and all of its programming as early as September of this year, that the reactions were going to run a wide gamut from people that thought this was outstanding and they got a kick out of it, they found it humorous, for whatever reason I don't know, to the people that thought this was terrible and this was bad, but they accepted because they could see why it would happen and wouldn't be surprised that it has happened, to the people that didn't know, that are waiting to see how it plays out, to the people who don't care, to the people that think it's false information, to the people that think that this is just another example of certain segments of the wrestling media and the wrestling fan base having a fascination with trying to put TNA in the ground, this anti-TNA bias, if you will. I figure the reactions were going to run the entire spectrum and gamut. Now, for the people that sit there and think that this would potentially be great or you know they derive enjoyment out of this, I don't know why you would. Uh, maybe it's something you would laugh about, but... Seriously, why would you derive enjoyment out of this? People losing jobs, one less place in the business for people to go to ply their craft and learn and get better and potentially make a living at it. I don't really get it. But then I also don't understand these hardcore TNA fans that are sitting there and yet again just completely and totally jumping blindly to the defense of TNA when frankly the company doesn't deserve it. And when it comes to matters like this, this company does not have a whole lot of credibility. Look, I understand you love the company, you love the product, you have a passion for it. That's fine. I wish I had a pro passion uh, and love for the product of any company at this point in time. I, I really do. I applaud you for that. But now we start to get to the point where the fear of what could potentially happen, the emotions that, and passions that you have tied into that product that you love, are starting to cloud your better judgment and, frankly, your common sense. Now, it is true that until it happens, it hasn't happened. And there's nothing to say that it actually does happen. I, I agree with that. It is one of those things. It's a fluid situation, and it could potentially not come to pass. Something could change. It could, the report could be false. You know, So I understand that. But we get to the point where we start to get in the silly season when we talk about the anti-TNA bias and the anti-TNA narrative. Now, look, I understand when we're talking about TNA, no matter what TNA was ever going to do as a company, good, bad, or otherwise, they're always facing an uphill battle. They were always going to be a redheaded stepchild of the wrestling business, and that's just a simple fact. Just a simple fact. Because for a long time, this has been viewed as the established kind of number two company and the closest threat to any type of competition in the States to the WWE from a professional wrestling standpoint. But the problem is, is that they were never really viable, legitimate competition to the WWE because the WWE had so many years of a head start and so much of an established market share, they were always going to be an uphill battle. It was always going to be a redhead stepchild situation, especially when you compare it to the fact that they weren't even going to measure up to a WCW or an ECW. You know, so I feel for TNA and its fans to a degree because I understand it and I get it. But this whole thing of there being an anti-TNA bias, this type of crap needs to stop. And especially when it comes to now, a lot of people are getting mad at the messenger, and the messenger in this particular case is Dave Meltzer. Now, look, I'm not a big fan of Dave Meltzer. I'm really not. And if you've watched my videos in the past, you've probably been able to pick up on that. You know, this is a guy that never worked in the business. This is a guy that has, in my opinion, in many ways, been able to <laughs> capitalize off of the stupidity of others in the business for feeding him information for over three decades now. This is also a guy that has, you know, exposed a lot of the business in a bad way in terms of insider terms and sort of in terms of backstage news. You know, it makes it very hard to get a surprise appearance or a surprise return of somebody because somebody like a Dave Meltzer is always spoiling that shit for you weeks or months ahead of time. Um, then you also have the standpoint, too, of how he's influenced two generations of wrestling fans, if you think about it, going back all the way to 1983 with some of the drivel and crap that he's put out there when it comes to star ratings and what really matters, talking about work, talking about all this, and then all the imitators and attempting to be duplicators, people out there that have helped create that internet wrestling community in a way. So I'm not a huge fan of Dave Meltzer. I'm not. And, you know, when I see a Dave Meltzer tweet something about how MMA 
people look down upon wrestling fans. Well, I say two things. Number one, the last, and I emphasize again, the last company or product that needs to be talking shit about anybody's fans would be the UFC or MMA. Have they looked at their own fucking fan base? Because one, a lot of those UFC MMA fans are former or current professional wrestling fans, and two, they're every bit the idiots that we are alleged to be as well. Number two... Who's the one that helped influence a lot of those idiots over the past 30 plus years? I'm just saying, Meltzer. I'm just saying. But this whole thing of people saying that he's got it out for TNA, he's got this anti-TNA bias, let's, let's not overrate TNA's importance in the grand scheme of things. If you're a Dave Meltzer, do you really give a fuck about TNA all that much? I mean, do you really? And if you're a Dave Meltzer, would you really be that obsessed with trying to put out a bunch of negative bullshit information about TNA in the hopes of helping to sink TNA? Does that really make any sense? I mean, when you remove yourself from the you love TNA bullshit, does that really make any fucking sense? Of all the things that Dave Meltzer could do with his time... You really think he sits there and he's obsessed with talking shit about TNA solely and that he would get nothing more than a great heart on at his advanced years at the thought of TNA going out of business. This is kind of one of these things to me where it's like shoot the messenger. It's blame everybody except the people that should be blamed or held responsible. And I know people are going to sit there, especially the TNA hardcore fans, and understandably so, are going to sit there and say, well, it's not true, and this is bullshit, and you know what? We don't know if it's true yet or not. I agree. It's one of those situations that we can have our own preconceptions, we can have our own thoughts or beliefs or opinions on it, but until shit gets to get, especially when that fall lineup is announced, you're talking about August, September, we really don't know. Meltzer's report could be 100% on point, accurate, true, and a lot of you are going to have to eat shit and like the taste of it. His report could end up proving to be completely inaccurate and stuff changes or stuff never did change because it was never actually going to happen. And then Meltzer might have egg on his face. And that is true. But at this point in time, for TNA hardcore fans to sit there and say flat out that this is a freaking lie when they really don't know would be as foolish as those that are getting a kick out of this saying that this has got to be 100% absolutely God's honest truth when they really don't know. We don't know. We can have our beliefs or thoughts or opinions on it, but at this point in time, we can't sit there and say for sure that we know because we don't. And this comes to somebody of all people, like a Vince Russo as well. How ironic it is, the people that love TNA so much, have now found themselves aligned with the guy that many of them hated because in part of what he did all those years of working with TNA and a guy like Vince Russo. I guess when it comes to Dave Meltzer, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, and they all join together in one TNA six-sided circle jerk to try and go after Dave Meltzer and the anti-TNA crowd, if you will. And you know, Vince Russo has used this, as others have, as an opportunity to sit there and try and bash the dirt sheets and talk about how they run uh, information irresponsibly, that they don't properly vet their sources, that they don't check, double check and recheck again their information and what have you, to which I say a couple of things. Number one, you know, if you're that mad about what Meltzer and the dirt sheets do, maybe you shouldn't shoot the messenger. Maybe you should shoot the people, so to speak, that are delivering the message to the messenger to begin with. This is the whole ludicrous and ridiculousness of the anti-dirt sheet view when it comes to professional wrestling. Who the fuck are the ones that are feeding the information? Who, the one, who are the ones that are sitting there and selling their story or selling their dirt to the dirt sheet? It's the people in the wrestling business. So when somebody like Russo says that he makes up shit or that he's being irresponsible in how he reports shit or that he's not getting the story fully correct, well, he's reporting it, what he gets from other sources. 
and maybe we should be mad about those sources that are revealing the dirt and the information to freaking begin with. That's where the problem lies, not with somebody like a Dave Meltzer. In terms of the irresponsibility of it, when you're talking about a guy like Meltzer who's been doing it for over 30 years, you know, whether you like him or not, at some point in time, you would have to assume if he's been doing it over 30 years and been able to make probably a six-figure income each and every year and have umpteen dozen freaking other crappy dirt sheets all over the internet, sit there and rip off all of his content in order to fill the content on their crappy-looking sites, you would think at some point in time that the guy just might have a little bit of credibility. Now, is this a situation or an example where we focus on a small percentage of the time that Meltzer's information might be proven to be false or inaccurate or what have you? Or do we focus on the larger scheme of things and focus on the larger scale percentage of the time that Meltzer's information is relatively accurate or completely on fucking point? You know, this is very reminiscent to me of when so many people were sitting there that the rumors of Spike TV canceling TNA were bullshit. They weren't going to cancel Impact. People like Dave Meltzer just handed out for TNA. It was false. It was a lie. No, it wasn't. It was true. And it came to pass. And a lot of the same patterns of half-assed but not real denials that I see coming from Destination America, Impact Wrestling, you know, TNA, and the people involved with TNA makes me believe where there's smoke, there's got to be some type of fire at this point, again, based off of the history. And then when somebody like a Vince Russo wants to sit there and say, well, the reports of that he put out there of me and discussions with Lucha Underground and everything else, those were false and inaccurate. Says who? Because this is the same exact type of attitude you had when the report started surfacing from Mike Johnson and Dave Meltzer about you consulting again with TNA and Spike TV didn't like that and that was a bad thing and TNA was trying to keep it under wraps before it eventually got revealed, you were on the same cocksure, confident attitude that this was bullshit and this was false, except it was true. And you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. And then, as is so often the case when you talk about somebody like a Vince Russo, he got made to look like a jackass because now he had to backpedal because he basically got out. Is he wrong about Lucha Underground because it's just flat out wrong? Is he wrong because it didn't come to fruition and there's no like verifiable proof? Is it wrong just because you say so? Is it wrong because there is, again, no verifiable proof? I mean, when we're talking about credibility here in the grand scheme of things, and we're talking about Vince Russo and fucking TNA as opposed to Dave Meltzer, as much as, frankly, I don't really like any of the parties involved, especially when it comes to Russo and especially Meltzer, I'm going to side with Meltzer on this one in terms of credibility. Is he always right? Almost certainly not. There are plenty of times where he's completely freaking wrong, and some of the opinions he has about the state of the professional wrestling business, more in particular the business itself, I think are completely moronic and idiotic and are negative influences on hardcore wrestling fans. But we can't just sit there and totally whitewash everything and start calling him anti-TNA and a liar and a biased guy when the majority of the time he's actually proven to at least be somewhat, if not mostly, if not totally and completely correct. And for somebody like a Vince Russo to say that somebody like a Meltzer is irresponsible in the way he runs his stories and puts out his information because maybe, again, he didn't verify his sources, maybe he didn't vet them properly, maybe he didn't check, recheck, and double-check again. Uh, he did that shit, though, when it came to Spike TV canceling TNA. And for months it was, he's wrong, he's wrong, he's wrong, he's wrong. Uh, but he wasn't. And you see the same pattern of behavior now once the news starts coming out about Destination America. It's the same type of denial, non-denial type of shit that we saw last year. And then with Vince Russo working again with TNA, it's the same type of pattern. And, you know, Meltzer ended up being proven right. I mean, so what is it? It, it, it just is one of these things where... We don't know. And again, I'm emphasizing, we don't know. We can have our thoughts. And my thought, if I'm being honest, is that where there's smoke, there's fire. And if we're looking at this from a credibility standpoint, honestly, I'm going to take somebody like a Dave Meltzer more for what he has based off of his history and track record than I am with somebody like a Vince Russo or somebody like TNA and the people involved with TNA. That's just the way it is. Now, this whole notion, again, of Meltzer has an anti-TNA bias and he was just doing it to get clicks and he was doing it to get that. 
frankly, if we're being completely honest, if he was looking to do something like that, wouldn't he have done something more negative about, let's say, the WWE, which has a much larger fan base, which gets much more interest? You know, let's put it this way. You do a negative video about TNA, it's going to get many more views than a positive video about TNA. That's just a fact. But a negative video about TNA is going to get much smaller views than a negative video about WWE. That's typically the case. It's just how it is. People gravitate towards negativity, but in wrestling circles, they in particular gravitate towards negativity when it comes to the WWE. So, you know, as far as Meltzer, like I said, I don't particularly like him. I think in some ways he has been bad for the wrestling business. But I also can't sit there and sit idly by as people are knocking him um, for his credibility. How many of these people that are knocking him for his credibility are reading these umpteen dozen other chop shop dirt sheets that recycle and gargle and regurgitate 90% of the information from the Wrestling Observer Newsletter? How can you sit there and question the guy when you're sitting there and reading the sites that are based off of the information that he puts out there from his sources that he's accumulated over the past 30 plus years? And when it comes to TNA, what type of credibility does TNA really have? And for some of those fans that might sit there and say, well, I know the real story, or I've heard that it's not true. Is that the same shit they told you when it came to Vince Russo not working with the company again? Is that the same shit they told you? When it came to Spike TV is not going to cancel TNA and nothing is going to happen? Just because you want it to not be true doesn't mean that it's not true. On the flip side, just because you want it to be true doesn't make it true itself. Now, furthermore, there's one important distinction here that I think needs to be drawn up. is just because a Destination America would potentially be looking at canceling TNA and all of its programming, that wouldn't necessarily mean that the company would completely and totally die. It almost certainly wouldn't be a good thing. It would probably be a very bad thing. It would make it very hard if a third-rate network like that crap old Destination America didn't want them. Who the fuck would? But there are options. There are choices. There is still potential that TNA could survive. I just don't like the narrative that's been put out there about how Meltzer in particular is inaccurate and irresponsible in the information that he puts out there. I don't like how people are just sitting there and trying to paint him as this guy that has a very anti-TNA bias, you know, because frankly, one, even if you believe that, maybe if you actually bothered reading his entire work as opposed to a portion of maybe realize that sometimes he says good things about the company too. Just because sometimes somebody says something bad or critical about the company doesn't mean they have an anti-something-something something bias. Now, it's part of the nature. He is a critic ultimately. So part of the job, ding dong, dumb dicks, is he is going to critique. That is the nature of the fucking beast. Okay? But with that said, again, if he's reporting information then he probably, after over three decades of freaking doing it, going way back to when Vince Russo was running a video store or whatever the hell, or writing for the freaking WWF magazine, if he's going with it, he probably feels pretty good about the information. I'm just saying. You know, we've, we've heard this shit before, and I'm sorry, TNA fans, you might not want it to be true, but it may very well be true. I hope that it's not true. I hope that Meltzer is wrong. I just don't think you should be shooting the messenger. I really don't. Because I don't think it's particularly, excuse me, productive. In fact, I think it's counterproductive and it's totally missing the point. You can't sit there with a guy like Meltzer and totally ignore the 75 to 85% of the time where he's somewhat to mostly or completely accurate just to sit there and paint a particular narrative because of the 10 or 50% of the time. You can't take that out of context. Like somebody like Arusa responding to me on Twitter talking about how he was maybe right about one thing but wrong about Lucha Underground. Okay, so now you're taking just two examples involving yourself and you're skewing the numbers. Do you really think Meltzer has a 50-50 success rate at best? I mean, come on now. Like I said, the, the, if there's one thing that's funny about this whole thing, 
is that I find it funny that TNA hardcore fans and Vince Russo seem to be aligned to join together. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, I guess. What the fuck ever. But this whole shit about hating on Meltzer needs to stop. I don't like the guy, but what some of these people are saying about him is just bullshit.